Hello friends and greetings for today. Welcome back to another tutorial on IST QB Agile Testers sample paper discussions. We are finally at the end of the set B, which is the last tutorial of this particular chapter, this particular set and this particular series as well. Currently we have just two mock papers, but we will certainly look forward to add more uh, over a period of time as and when we have some good sample papers created. So let's get quickly get started and we have three more questions remaining to be discussed and the chapter what we are talking about is agile testing methods techniques and tools well the next question we have is question number 38 and here we do have something more interesting to talk about in fact the other three questions will be exactly in the same line or in the same scenario but different questions to be asked to you so the scenario says as a plant lover who travels frequently i want to have an automated watering system so that my plants won't die now that's one of the uh, use case or user story provided to you so you have also been given the following acceptance criteria for this particular user story number number one the water shouldn't turn on when the temperature is greater than 85 degrees and the moisture content of the soil changes from normal to dry right so it's like the very first condition is that they are saying water should not turn on when the temperature is greater than 85 degrees that means hotter than 85 so of course we do understand that we don't water the plants when they are hotter uh, because that may kill the plant and the moisture content of the soil changes from normal to dry the water should be dispersed for five minutes at the rate of 0.5 ounces per minutes so that's another criteria what they're saying that how much water should be uh, applied to the plants or watering should be done so they are limiting it to uh, disperse for five minutes where the rate of dispersal will be 0.5 ounces per minute which of the following is the first test case that should be written for the acceptance test driven implementation now here i think uh, we are just blending this particular approach with acceptance test driven development where uh, acceptance test uh, or the test cases are derived from the acceptance criteria so all that they are trying to do is how would you define test cases from the acceptance criteria so we have few options to of course pick up the right answer option a says set the soil moisture level to wet then increase the heat and verify that the moisture level changes to normal and then to dry and then to parched so I think uh, in this particular situation, it's just going to, you know, uh, give a problem. The reason is just the moisture is not only the constraint because the acceptance criteria, what we have has combination of two things. So it's like, you know, we are talking about the condition to be dry uh, to, you know, do it. So wet, it does not work. Of course, that's a negative test case, first of all. And uh, we certainly do not look forward to try the negative ones first however it's changing just the moisture will not let the water dispense because uh, the temperature is also a criteria so in that context an acceptance criteria is taken as together where it is mentioned as a part of the criteria we don't take them in separate test cases b set the temperature greater than 85 degrees and verify that the temperatures are increased accordingly I think again in this case also we are just taking one part of the num first acceptance criteria not both the parts so this is partially correct but partially incorrect also because my acceptance criteria one is about both the temperature as well as the the he moisture content of the soil so a and b can be straightforward ruled out because it does not talk about both the attributes at the same time that's one of the criteria to derive test cases from acceptance criteria now we have C and D. C says set the temperature to less than 85 degrees and moisture to dry and verify that no water is dispersed. I think that's a contradicting one because they said as per the water should turn on when the temperature is greater than 85 degrees, not less than 85 degrees. So of course doing it less than 25 should not turn on the water. But second part if you see the moisture content of the soil changes from normal to dry. That means in dry it should turn on. So I think it's a contradicting again, less than 85 degrees and dry, it should not turn on. That's a negative test case again. So it looks good because of course in one criteria field is an AND gate, then of course the water will not be dispensed, but that's still a negative test. I should always go with the first 
uh, on my priority with the valid test. So the option D, what we have here is set the temperature to greater than 85 degrees and the moisture to dry and verify that the water is dispersed. So I think absolutely fine. The very first test we will have is for valid. Then I will have option C and then I will have any other thing. But A and B are incorrect because they are not targeting both the attributes of an acceptance criteria. So in either case, these are, these are not the options to be picked up for the test cases. However, when we talk about the uh, C and D, in that D should be tried first compared to C. So in that context put together, the right answer here is D, set the temperature to greater than 85 degrees and the moisture to dry and verify that the water is dispersed. Moving on to the next question, which has pretty much the similar scenario. So we will not waste our time reading that out for and making this video longer, but keeping it to the point, of course, the scenario user story is exactly the same. Acceptance criteria is also the same. If you want, you can pause and read that. Now let's come to the question exactly in the last line, which one of the following provides the proper values to use to achieve 100% to value boundary analysis coverage with the minimum number of test cases. I think all they're asking you to apply the boundary value analysis technique, but as we do understand that we have two types of boundary value analysis, two point analysis and three point analysis. Whereas in two point analysis, you take two values on each boundary. In three point analysis, you take three values on each boundary. So in that context, first of all, I need to have the boundary defined here. So my boundary is greater than 85. Right. So it's a very critical thing that when we say greater than and greater than and equal to. Right. If I say greater than, then it is 86 and above. But if I say greater than and equal to 85, it means 85 and above. So many people go wrong generally with the operators. If you don't read them carefully, you may just go wrong right at that place. And that should certainly be a tricky one. So at this point, if I take the acceptance criteria one, I have uh, the temperature as greater than 85, which means 85 till 85, the water should not turn on. And right from 86, the water should turn on, taking a whole number concept. So in that case, let's have a look on what options do we have. And uh, of course, the moisture and other things are also there to be measured. So a temperature at 85 and 86, which are the two boundary values on both the side, valid and invalid, moisture at dry and normal. Okay, that can be another uh, partition where we can have like, you know, dry, which should turn on and normal, it should not turn on. So that could be a good combination. B, temperature at 85 and 86, moisture at dry and normal, water disbursement for 5 minutes and 5 minutes, 1 second rate at 0 0.5 and 0 0.4. Okay, that's interesting. It's even taking the second acceptance criteria into consideration to talk about whether that can be fulfilled or that can be taken as a part of our test case to see how exactly that meets the desired expectations. Okay, so let us have a look on that. What exactly do we have in option C? Option C also goes in line, temperature at 85 and 86, moisture at dry and normal, water disbursement for five minutes and then four minutes, 59 seconds, water rate at 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. Now, what's basically uh, the trickiness of the values here is, that we are just trying to see uh, on the whole number side, first of all, like uh, five minutes and on the other hand side of five minutes plus one. And in the option C, we are saying five minutes and less than five minutes. So of course, less than five minutes is still valid because the water disbursement should happen for uh, five minutes, right? The duration is already defined up to five minutes. The water disbursement should happen. So C is generally going wrong with that. And uh, and if I talk about the rate 0 0.5 and 0 0.6, that's absolutely right. But the uh, part B of disbursement is 5 and 4 minutes 59 seconds in the option C is incorrect. Whereas if I take option B, they are again incorrect. The disbursement is set based on the inputs. So the values of the disbursement rate and time are generally not adjustable because it is just going to dispense a fixed value, right? I'm not testing, that's not an input parameter, however. So even if I do consider the positiveness of the option B, I cannot pick it up as the right answer because the input and output are two different things. 
uh, boundary value analysis, equivalence partitions, decision tables, straight transitions helps you to identify the input data, not the output, you know, uh, examinations or actual results. So the output is based on these two conditions, that is the temperature and the moisture. So in that context, B and C can be blindly ruled out. And let's move to option D. It says temperature at 85 and 84 and moisture dry and normal. So 85 and 84 both fall under the valid range. So none of them are, uh, sorry, both fall under the invalid range. So none of them covers, you know, greater than 85, which is 86 or plus. So D is wrong. So I think that gives you complete explanation. If in case you got confused, please re-listen to any kind of explanation once again to get to the correct conclusion. The right answer here is A, temperature at 85 and 86, where 85 will be invalid, 86 will be valid, and moisture at dry and normal, where dry is valid and normal is invalid. Well, finally, moving to the last question of our discussion, which is again exactly on the same scenario. We have the same user story with us and we have the two acceptance criteria exactly mentioned the same. Let's move on to the next part and what exactly is the question? Which of the following is a question that would be most appropriate to ask when preparing to conduct exploratory testing? So from an experience based testing point of view, what should you look forward to ask as a question given this information to you? So. Again, this could be completely driven by the options. You cannot make an assumption or you cannot make a conclusion right here. So option A says, how many of these systems will run concurrently getting data from the same temperature controller? Okay, because uh, there may be many number of plants and so on. So it looks good, but again, I have a conspiracy here. So we'll discuss that. B, which equivalence partition and boundary values should be tested, which is another critical thing to be discussed at this point of time. Okay, see how does the software transition from normal to dry state, but that's not a software, right? It's more of like the weather condition or soil conditions, the amount of moisture, there might be a sensor which might be detecting the level of moisture in the soil and accordingly changing the state of that, which is more of like a state transition testing, right? And uh, D is talking about the what can be done with the software that might cause it to fail or act in an unexpected way okay and that would certainly lead to our understanding of what exactly it should be so i think uh, what can be done with the software that might cause it to fail or act in an unexpected way makes more sense why because when we are in experience-based testing te techniques, we understand that the formal testing techniques are not applicable, right? And that's what we are here for. And in that context, option B is talking about the formal techniques like equivalence and boundary value analysis. They are contradicting with this category. Uh, equivalence and boundary value analysis is from uh, black box testing technique. So these two are two different categories and they cannot just merge together. Right. So B is ruled out because that's a formal set of techniques. C is ruled out, which is also a black box test technique. Now we are left with option A and D. Option A says how many of these systems will run concurrently getting the data from the same temperature controller. OK, and uh, that's more of like an input to prepare the required set of data and uh, understanding the environment, whereas option D, right? what can be done with the software that might cause it to fail or act in an unexpected way would be more interesting. See, I can go with option A as well compared to D, but the question here clearly says that what would be most appropriate? I'm not worried about how many systems are going to work here if I'm talking about the functionality, but when it comes to functionality, I'm pretty much more worried about that what are the chances or what are the scenarios in which it will fail? so that it can help me measure those and identify the required set of defects. In that context, I would prefer more. And the answer will be D, what can be done with the software that might cause it to fail or act in an expected way? Because we as a test engineer are more worried about how exactly a system may stop responding or fail in terms of identifying the set of defects. Whereas option A, is secondary to that of the option D. Anyway, so that's all from this particular tutorial. Indeed, uh, I hope you had a good understanding about the sample questions from this chapter. 
Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.